How's it going, everyone? My name is Charlie, and I am the CEO and co-founder of the Orca Network. Um, I'm here to talk about how you can test big ideas, whether it's a big idea for a startup, whether it's a big idea for an existing startup that you're currently working on, whether it's a new product feature, whatever it is, or even maybe a big idea that doesn't even relate to um, startups in general, whether it's just something that you want a, a career change or anything. Um, that's what I'm here for, um, is to kind of show my methodology of way I've kind of learned over the years. This took a long time for me to kind of be aware of this concept and how to evolve this, how I can test my big ideas in a more efficient and proper manner. So I'm excited to be here, talk to you guys. Um, so here's a little summary overview. Um, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm going to kind of go through the, the, the four or five step process, which is initially getting that initial idea, that, that aha moment, but then going de taking a step back, detaching emotionally from that idea, asking critical questions, seeking those answers, reflecting on it, and then repeating that process to ultimately help you achieve um, great success. So who I am, a little bit about myself. Um, I am from California, that's why I put the California flag, um, Southern California from a city, um, Laguna Niguel, um, California. Um, played soccer my whole life. I didn't put the soccer ball up here, but soccer was a big part of my, um, my life. So I got um, recruited at Stanford to play soccer. I went there from 2017 to 2021, um, learned a lot. Soccer was amazing got my best friends through the sport. I got to see many different parts of the world that taught me many different things about myself as well as about how um, cultures interact with each other as well. Um, it then gave me the opportunity to live out in Salt Lake City, Utah, um, which was fantastic. So I played for the Real Monarchs professionally for a year. It was, it was definitely awesome living that childhood dream, playing soccer professionally. Um, and then on the right, I put the logo for Orca, which um, come last, this last February, I moved on from my soccer career um, to pursue Orca full time. Um, for me, it's just a quick little bit background. Soccer is amazing and awesome, but I felt like for me personally, it allows like it's very self motivating, self intri like intrinsically motivating, and like kind of the impact. I'm very impact driven. And I can only make so much impact through playing soccer. And it was kind of more only making impact on myself. So I, I moved on from my soccer career in February and I'm pursuing Orca, which hopefully is going to impact the lives of millions of people. And that's something that you should always realize is that technology has the power to scale to millions and millions of people. And you can truly make an impact by utilizing the power of technology. So that's kind of a little bit of background on myself. I'm now going to jump into this concept of how to test big ideas. So you all have been there before. You all know that aha moment when you're like, boom, you get that initial brilliant idea. You think you are an absolute genius. I put a little meme here, like when you imagine yourself as Albert Einstein saying, wow, you're a freaking genius. Um, kind of that light bulb moment. Um, so we've all been there and you know how it is. And this is where I've struggled with, um, whether it's with Orca, the initial idea of Orca, but as well as kind of like new, say when we're pivoting or we're trying to do a, a new event idea or a new product feature, thinking it's just like absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to backtrack a tiny bit here. Um, I have a co-founder, Arda, as well. He was my teammate on the Stanford men's soccer team. So myself and him are co-founders on this. And we've actually had to learn the hard way as well through this of like, this concept of having big ideas, but then testing it before we truly jump right into it. So you have that idea. And basically, I want you to imagine this idea as being a bucket and at, and at first an empty bucket, a bucket that doesn't hold any water and water can represent knowledge and wisdom. But basically, this bucket represents what your idea is. And um, the next thing that you want to do, and I would argue this is probably the most crucial part of this, is you have to detach emotionally from the idea. So this concept of like you have this brilliant idea that you initially thought of, right? You're holding on to it. You have to take a step back 
and just release yourself from it. You want to go detach, let go of the emotions and accept the fact that, hey, it is literally just an idea. And yes, it may be a brilliant idea, but you do not know. So you have to let go, detach from the concepts emotionally. So for myself and my co-founder, based on our experience, I would come to him saying, Yo, hey Arda, I have this brilliant idea for this new product feature. We're gonna do this, this, and this. And then like I'm like all of a sudden attached to it. And then I would pitch it to him and he would be like, I don't get it. Like I just I like I can't, I'm not on the same wavelength as you. Like he starts asking a bunch of questions. And then I start getting very defensive around it. I because like I think that this idea is brilliant. And then he starts poking holes in it. And then I get upset at him. And then it creates a conflict between us two. And then ultimately allows us to not work as efficiently as we should. Um, as we're co-founders, obviously, if we're not working properly, then the direction of our company isn't going anywhere. So I've had to learn over the years to like, hey, if I have an idea and I pitch it to him, and if he's not on the same wavelength, I have to let go of those emotions and ultimately realize, hey, we're both on the same team and that it's okay that he's not on the same team. It's my job to go back and kind of like do more data research to then present back to him saying, hey, why this is a truly brilliant idea. But first, you got to let go of those emotions. Um, like I said, just remember your idea is just an empty hypothesis. It's just a bucket with nothing in it yet. And your job is ultimately to fill it up with wisdom and knowledge. Um, it's I kind of put this meme here from Michael Scott. Uh, like I knew exactly what to do, but in more real sense, I had no idea what to do. And that's ultimately what these initial ideas are all about. Um, so this goes to the next step. So I want you to imagine that bucket as you're starting to fill it up with water, you have to ask questions. You basically want to imagine yourself asking questions. You put those questions on the board. If you present, say for me, I would present my idea to my co-founder Arda. He would then basically start poking holes and asking questions. I have to take a step back, detach emotionally, realize that we're both on the same team here. And any question he asks, if I don't have the answers, that's okay. That's totally fine. All you need to do is just keep track of all those tabs, keep track of all those questions that people are asking. You have to share your idea with as many people as possible. Keep track of those um, questions that they're having. And then ultimately take time to then, this is what I'm saying, the next step is then reflect as well. So journal, you need to like basically, hey, these are the people that are asking these types of questions. I need to go away. I need to spend some time researching to get answers to these questions. Because remember, your idea is just an I, I empty hypothesis. They're poking holes in it, um, which ultimately will help you then figure out ways to patch those holes. Um, so it's kind of like this concept of like truly asking why. Like I put this meme here of an apple falls from the tree. Isaac Newton is like, sitting there like why though you know truly ask those questions during this phase very be very very critical of this hypothesis because ultimately the more critical you are the more questions you have the more answers that you then go and get the stronger your idea becomes um so that's kind of the next phase here is like seeking answers so you you have the idea you're attached for a minute you're attached to it you detach you have now kind of asked a bunch of questions. You've created that data bank of all the questions. You've spent some time reflecting on it. Now is the time where you're then trying to figure out ways to patch those holes that your co-founder, that your customers, your users have poked into your idea. You have to go then seek the answers to them. So uh, that's why I put this graphic as like band-aids patching the holes of that bucket. Because the more um, times you patch it, the more water you can hold, the more knowledge, the more wisdom, the stronger your hypothesis is becoming. Um, so it's kind of like asking this question, like, why, why, why? Oh, that's why. You know, so you're going to those questions, you're going deep down to then you're ultimately getting those answers and you're feeling a lot better after that. So then this comes kind of like to the one of the last stages here, which I'm just kind of kind of going through the whole process of basically you want to repeat that process. And this is an interesting slide because I put time on the X axis and wisdom on the Y axis. So you can imagine yourself here as having like this like set level of wisdom around your idea. You know, that initial idea comes, you detach from it, you almost drop down. You go down to wisdom, you get maybe more, you get unmotivated, 
be very critical about yourself because you're asking those questions and then you're truly questioning, hey, is this idea even possible? By asking those questions, you were then spending time reflecting on it. As you're coming out of that, you're coming through this, this phase here where you're then seeking answers. And those answers ultimately allow you to be higher up on the y-axis, which is reflecting on wisdom. And then ultimately, you get to a point where you've achieved a lot more knowledge around your idea. Therefore, it becomes stronger. And then you take a step back as, again and basically say, hey, do I need to repeat this process? Do I need to drop down again, ask more questions, spend more time reflecting, getting more answers to make it a little bit stronger? Because you can basically, like, like I said, that bucket is then getting more full and more full. The more you do this, the more you're able to test your, your ideas, the stronger your hypothesis becomes. Therefore, you're able to truly make an impact and make a difference, applying your skill sets to problems that matter in the world and changing the world for the better. So I hope that you can use this methodology in a way that allows you to be critical of yourself, whether it's a startup idea, whether it's a new product feature for your product, or if it's just um, something else in life that you are kind of testing out. So hope you learned a lot from this and I'm looking forward to kind of maybe hearing some feedback on what you thought of it. So. Good luck and change the world. <laughs>